Hello everyone. In this lecture, a brief lecture is on pedigree analysis, and hope this is going to help students of genetics uh, in understanding the use and use of pedigrees in genetic studies. First of all, you should be able to define a pedigree. What is a pedigree, and why we use pedigrees for genetic studies? Pedigree is actually a diagram or a family tree that shows the relationships among the members of a family like it shows the relationships among you your siblings your parents grandparents uncles etc so why we use pedigree analysis particularly in human being so pedigree analysis comes into play when experimental matings are not possible like uh, you have studied classical genetics you have gone through the mendelian experiments he performed over pea plant but in case of human being experimental matings are not possible both ethically as well as practically why not practically because in case of human being you have to wait for a long gestation period and depending upon the trait you are studying you have to wait for a, period, a long period of time so that your trait reaches an observable mark for example if you are going to study human height you have to wait for an individual for an offspring to reach an adult age so the, you can measure the height of that individual and uh, interpret the mode of inheritance in that case another reason why pedigree analysis is so important because in case of human being only a few offsprings are available per reproductive event so you cannot make any statistical analysis or conclusions on the basis of that now let's move ahead we will first of all we will overview some signs and symbols which are used to interpret pedigrees so here in this slide you can see in first half of the screen first symbol is a blank circle that is used for a healthy or you can say a female that is not showing the particular trait similarly a blank square for males and a black diamond shape if gender of an individual is not known shaded or filled circle square and of course diamond is used for individuals showing a particular trait similarly on number three you can see a horizontal line connecting a male and a female that is actually a marriage line so they are parents a marriage line can be shown in two ways a single horizontal line is for the parents for a couple which are not related and a double horizontal line is used for closely related couples or you can say parents closely related means uh, like their first cousins also and last uh, in first half you can see these are the siblings numbered from 1 to 4 in their birth order first one is a son then two daughters and finally a fourth offspring is also a son this is also called a sibship line in second half of the screen you can see two individuals which are connected like a diagonal lines these are actually for twins and twins are of two types if these diagonal lines are not connected with a small horizontal line they are fraternal twins if they are connected with a small horizontal line they are identical or you can say monozygotic twins similarly to compress the diagram or a tree if like in first half you can see at number two and three two daughters were there so you can use a circle and put the number inside that circle to show that two consecutive daughters were born to a couple and finally you can see a square with an arrow and labeled as p p is actually a proband proband is that individual in a family that is 
for the very first time reported to show or have a particular trait. If you are watching a pedigree and you come across a circle, square or a diamond shape with this oblique line cutting through that circle or square, this, is, this symbol is actually used for deceased individuals in a family and similarly a circle or a square with a dot inside is for heterozygous carriers are those individuals having an affected or uh, concerned allele but they are not showing that phenotype. And finally, these Roman numbers 1, 2, 3 they are used to label successive generations. Now, we can discuss some modes of inheritance uh, that can be distinguished on the base of pedigree analysis. First of all, a trait can be autosomal trait or an X-linked trait or uh, you, you also could use the term sex-linked trait. Autosomal traits whose genes are present on autosomes, sex-linked traits whose genes are present particularly on X chromosome. Autosomal traits can be autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant traits. Let us see the properties of an autosomal recessive traits properties on the basis of which you can decide that it is an, it is an autosomal recessive trait. First of all for recessive traits whether they are autosomal or they are sex linked recessive traits often skips generations. What does that mean? skips generations actually it means two parents not showing a particular trait can have an offspring with that particular trait like if you say in case of albinism two normally pigmented parents can have an albino child next one is as autosomes have same combination in male and female. So, there are equal chances for both sexes to show a particular trait or have a particular disease. Next property of autosomal recessive traits is that autosomal recessive trait will appear in offspring that is produced as the result of cousin marriages, marriage between two closely related individuals because probability of finding an affected or mutant allele in closely related individuals is very high because they share same genes through their parents, grandparents and so, so as you all know recessive traits are only expressed in homozygous recessive condition. So, fourth point if both parents are affected it means both parents are homozygotes for a particular allele all children should be affected. You can solve on your papers and see if this point is true or not. In most cases when unaffected people mate with affected people all children are unaffected. Solve it also on your papers. Next point is when at least one child is affected. A child could only be affected if at least both parents have one affected allele. It means both parents should be at least heterozygotes or a one parent is heterozygote and other parent is homozygous for affected allele. If one parent is heterozygote and the other parent is homozygote for an affected allele, half of their children should be affected. Similarly, most affected individuals have unaffected parents. Can you elaborate why? Can you elaborate point number 6? Yes, because th this is very rare that two affected people come across and marry each other. Now, you will pause this video and solve this pedigree for genotype of all individuals shown in this pedigree. I will do another separate video and show step, one, step by step guide to solve a pedigree. Next is autosomal dominant traits. Dominant trait either autosomal or sex linked they do not normally skip generations. So, when an affected mate person mates with an unaffected person 50 percent of their offsprings should be affected.
this is your activity solve on your paper uh, i will help you in next video how to solve these activities traits should appear in almost equal numbers among sexes as autosomal traits are uh, expressed equally in both males and females next one is an autosomal dominant trait uh, pedigree is to be solved by you people sex linked recessive traits so recessive traits as I, I have already told you they usually skip generation but this is a different case sex linked recessive traits these are actually the traits which are being controlled by those genes who are present on x chromosomes and you should know at this stage that genes of x chromosomes females have two copies of x chromosomes so, so they could be homozygotes or heterozygotes but males have only one copy of x chromosomes so males are always hemizygous males could have an affected copy of that gene or a normal copy of that gene but female can be homozygous or heterozygous both normal copies both affected copies one normal one affected copy three different situations can be present sex linked recessive traits have a particular mode of inheritance we call it zigzag pattern of inheritance in which, in which a trait is transferred from a father through a carrier daughter to his grandson a sex linked trait as its genes are present on x chromosomes can never be passed from a father to his son because son inherit only y chromosome from his father okay and affected females come from affected fathers because female inherit x chromosome one x chromosome from her father and one x chromosome from her mother so she can inherit a trait from an affected father or an affected or at least carrier mother for sex linked recessive trait if a female is affected think she should be homozygote for affected allele if a female is homozygote all of her sons would inherit one x chromosome from their mother what does that mean it means if a female is affected all of her sons should be affected so if you see a pedigree in which an affected female have all of her sons affected that should ring a bell in your mind that it is a sex linked recessive traits pedigree approximately half of the sons of a carrier female should be affected use your common sense a carrier female have one normal x chromosome and one x chromosome with affected allele so there are 50 percent chances half of her sons should inherit a normal copy of allele and half of her sons should inherit abnormal copy of allele yep solve this one for yourselves i will help you in next video sex link dominant traits dominant traits does not skip generations as we have already discussed either it is autosomal or sex linked affected males must come from affected mothers male inherit x chromosome from his mother so if the trait is x linked male can inherit only from his mother approximately half of the children of an affected heterozygous female are affected an affected heterozygous female means one normal copy of a gene and one abnormal copy half of her daughters should inherit abnormal copy and express that trait half of her sons should inherit that abnormal copy of gene and should express that particular trait so half of her sons and daughters should be affected affected females come from affected mothers or fathers all the daughters but none of the sons of an affected father are affected because if father is affected only x chromosome he got carries an abnormal gene and daughters inherit one x chromosome from their father 
So, if father is affected, all the daughters should be affected, but none of the sons because son inherit only Y chromosome from their father. And this is your practice pedigree. You will practice on there. I will write down genotypes of all that individuals in three generations. We will finish here with limitations of pedigree analysis as we will see in our next video. We are when we are solving pedigrees for their modes of inheritance, we often come across such pedigrees uh, which can be solved either for autosomal or sex linked traits. So, we cannot make conclusion based upon a single pedigree. We usually we have to go through pedigrees of different families for same disease. So, we can make a conclusion based upon our observations. Ok dear students, wait for my next video where we will practice some pedigrees and try to uh, decipher their modes of inheritance that will help further strengthen your concepts of pedigree analysis. Thank you.